Dr. Murray prescribed certain things to Michael Jackson as a doctor. You know, he had medical conditions, medical complaints. Now, uh, there have been some questions about whether or not uh, he was taking substances uh, uh, that Dr. Murray did not know about, uh, but, but as far as we know, Dr. Murray knew what Michael Jackson was taking, knew what he was doing, and, and, uh, and can kept up with all that. One of the things that, that we agreed with LAPD was, uh, although we are not allowed to discuss, and, and we certainly wouldn't want to discuss the substances that, that Michael Jackson might or might not have been taken, I, we, we, we can say this with, with clarity. Uh, Dr. Murray never prescribed Demerol, never administered Demerol, never saw him, uh, Michael Jackson, take Demerol, uh, and, that, and that goes uh, as well for OxyContin. So I think those are just rumors. When toxicology comes back, Karen, uh, that's going to be all, all cleared up. The doctor, at the time that he performed the CPR, used uh, one of his hands to brace under Michael Jackson's back to, to provide that support for the compression. Michael Jackson is a very frail man. He was very thin, um, uh, very small. And, uh, and the doctor um, compressed his chest with one hand, uh, braced uh, his back with the other hand. He checked to make sure there was blood flow. There was, um, that he was getting blood. In fact, uh, at the time that he was, that, that emergency personnel came, he still had a weak pulse. Well, I'm, I'm glad you asked. Um, no one's asked that of me today. Uh, he's doing better. He, uh, he watched his best friend die, or one of his you know, very good friends die, and, uh, uh, and now, of course, he's, he's under scrutiny, I think unfairly. Um, but he's doing better. I think um, as time goes on, uh, he'll, he'll get through it. He'll get over it. Um, I understand you were present for uh, his meeting with LAPD detectives. It was a three-hour interview on Saturday. Was, yeah. Could you describe for me the atmosphere inside that room during that meeting? Well, um, it was business-like. You know, I mean, it was congenial, but it was businesslike. Look, they're investigating a, a tragic death, um, and we wanted to be as helpful as possible with them. We were as thorough as we could be with them. We would keep them apprised, to, uh, let them know the situation prior to Michael Jackson's death, um, the relationship that Michael Jackson had with the doctor, uh, things of that nature. Uh, we expanded upon things that the police may not have known, and, uh, and we tried to be as helpful as, as possible. What do they want from Dr. Murray? What are they looking for? Uh, they're investigating the death of Michael Jackson. Uh, and of course, there's intense interest in that throughout the world, and they want to be correct about it, and thorough, and, and we want them to be as well. Uh, we, uh, we, we let them know at the conclusion of the interview that we'll always be available to them. Continue to ask if they have any questions for us. We'll be available to them. If the medical examiner in L.A. has questions for us, we'll be available to him. Uh, we want to get to the bottom of it as well. What is the relationship between Michael Jackson and Dr. Murray? Well, they're, they're friends, primarily. Let's start there. They're for, first and foremost friends. They've been friends, well, since 2006. It was just recently that, um, that Dr. Murray became his private physician. Uh, uh, the, the, the production company that was putting together Michael Jackson's show in Europe hired him to, to be available on a continuous basis uh, for Michael Jackson as he went through the rigors of training and preparing for, for the shows and, of course, the shows itself. We're talking about 50 shows, a very short period of time. Uh, they wanted to make sure that, that there was medical supervision. How did they become friends? Well, uh, in 2006, they were, uh, Michael Jackson was in Las Vegas. Dr. Murray has a practice there in, in Vegas. Um, and, um, and one of Michael Jackson's children was sick with a virus, and uh, he had been referred to Dr. Murray, and Dr. Murray came out at a very short notice at late at night and took care of the kids, and they developed a relationship from there. What was, what was Dr. Murray doing at Michael Jackson's home on Thursday when he went into cardiac arrest? After Dr. Murray became his physician, personal physician. On occasion, Michael Jackson liked him to stay the night. Uh, and, uh, and, and this was one of those nights, and he just happened to be there. Why did he want him to stay the night? 
I don't think it's fair to go into any of, of Michael Jackson's personal um, eccentricities or uh, daily rituals. And it's not fair to do that. But, um, but on occasion, he'd ask the doctor to, to come out and stay the night. And, and he did. Sometimes it, it was simply for company, frankly. But, uh, um, but on occasion, he'd do that. What happened on Thursday? What is Dr. Murray telling you about what happened? I mean, we've heard, you know, the 911 call. Can you take me through those events? Okay, I, I can. I can take you through the events after Michael Jackson was found not breathing. Okay, which uh, was where? Well, right. This is we're talking about Thursday morning. Thursday morning, the doctor um, went in to to Michael Jackson's room, saw that he was not breathing and uh, uh, rushed over to him, felt his body to see if, uh, if, if he was warm. He was, uh, looked for a pulse, found a weak pulse, and started performing CPR. The CPR went on for some period of time. 911 was called. Emergency personnel came out. And so was Michael Jackson laying in bed? He was. He was laying in bed. And so Dr. Murray did what? He lifted him up? He left him on the bed, moved him to the floor? I mean... Um, he performed CPR on the bed. He, 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 he reached around behind his back, put his hand behind his back to support his back, and, and started compressing his chest with his other hand. Michael Jackson's a very frail man um, and very thin, uh, and Dr. Murray is, 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 is not. Uh, and, but um, he made sure that, th that, uh, that there was proper compression uh, he checked to make sure that there was blood flow. There was. He, in fact, um, he, throughout the period of time he was, he was administering CPR, uh, Michael Jackson was alive, or at least he had a pulse uh, until emergency personnel got there. He was uh, pronounced dead uh, long after he made it to the hospital. So he died at the hospital? He was pronounced dead at the hospital, yes. How long did Dr. Murray perform CPR? Uh, at least 25 minutes, 25, 30 minutes. That's how long it took for help to arrive? No. Help, help came relatively quickly uh, after the phone call was made, five minutes, something like that. Um, it, the difficulty was getting help there. Michael Jackson's house, he's a very private individual, so his house uh, did not have any phone lines that worked, so calling from the house wouldn't have given 911 the address, and doctor knew this. Uh, while he's trying to, to perform CPR, he's also trying to call 911. The problem is he didn't know the exact physical address. He knew how to get there, but he didn't know the physical address. The doctor called down for help. Um, there was very few people in the house. He ran down at some point, got the chef's attention to get security. Security came upstairs, and, and the security personnel is who you hear on the, is who you hear on the 911 tape. Was, um, was Dr. Murray prescribing Michael Jackson any medication? Well, he was his doctor, so sure. I mean, there were medications that he was prescribing, but, but the, and, I, and I've heard the rumors about the different medicines. I was going to ask you to set the record uh, straight look, on that. Um, but the, the medicines that the doctor was prescribing to Michael Jackson were for specific medical purposes, specific medical complaints and, and conditions. They were appropriate for those conditions. They were, they, were, they were appropriately prescribed. They were indicated for those conditions. There were precautions taken for those medications to make sure that there weren't any, any slip-ups or, 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 or anything that would cause problems to Michael Jackson. Uh, um, what happened to Michael Jackson, the, the, the way he died would not be explained by the, by the medicines that the doctor had prescribed. Uh, now, the rumors are that, that um, he, Michael Jackson was addicted to Demerol and OxyContin. I've heard those rumors, but, and, and, and in fact, um, some have said, well, it comes from the source. Well, you know, um, I, I don't know about that source. I don't know whether he was, he was actually using Demerol or OxyContin, but I can say this. Dr. Murray never prescribed never administered Demerol to Michael Jackson, and that goes as well for OxyContin. Those substances were never part of any uh, prescription regimen or anything that Dr. Murray would have done with Michael Jackson. Did Dr. Murray think or know whether Michael Jackson was addicted to any kind of narcotic? 
Now, he didn't think he didn't know he was addicted if he is addicted. I mean, we're, let's not presume he's, he was addicted, first of all. It's not fair to Michael Jackson and his family. But if he was, Dr. Murray certainly had no knowledge of that. What is this investigation going to show as it relates to Dr. Murray? Uh, I think it's going to show that it w uh, this tragic death was just a tragic death. And that sometimes you can't just blame uh, uh, someone for a tragic death because it makes, uh, makes, it makes it feel sense to, it makes sense to certain individuals. Uh, and I think Dr. Murray will be exonerated and he can go on with his life and on with his practice. Doc, you know, Dr. Murray has, has close uh, contacts with individuals in Houston. He's very important to, to the citizens of Acres Homes. He put together a clinic there, or helped put together a clinic there that, that treats um, people that really need it the most, who have, who have uh, some, some who have inability to pay, um, and uh, he needs to get back to the good work that he's done. And, uh, and, and hopefully when this toxicology comes out and the investigation is complete, he can get on with his life. Does he plan on coming back to Houston anytime soon? Well, you know, he's got a practice in Nevada as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so he comes back and forth, and, he, and he'll continue to do that. Where is he now? He's in California right now. He's in L.A. We want to make sure we're available for investigators if they have anything that, that they need. At some point, he's going to have to go to Nevada back to his family, and, uh, and, and then really that's, that's good for him. That's, that's, that's a place he needs to go for healing purposes. He needs that comfort. But at some point, he's going to have to go to, go to, go to Nevada and, and, and start his practice up again. What do you know about his involvement in the Armstrong Medical Clinic in the Acres Homes area? I don't know anything about it. I don't know what that's about. I, I don't, but, you know, if, I, if you can fill me in, maybe I can, can answer that. Um, I was up there on Friday, and I'd spoken with an individual who I, was, who I later found out or was told was uh, Dr. Armstrong's wife. Um, and she said to me that Dr. Murray occasionally saw uh, was a cardiologist mm -hmm. and that occasionally saw patients here out of this clinic that was he was essentially associated with the clinic okay um, Dr. Armstrong according to the DEA had his DEA number yanked in 2005 for over prescribing that it was not that he should not be prescribing controlled substances That's so I was just so your question is, should Dr. Murray be guilty by association with Dr. Armstrong? No, just what does Dr. Murray, is Dr. Murray aware of Dr. Armstrong's um, alleged issues? Yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. I can tell you Dr. Murray is not Dr. Armstrong, whoever that is. Um, Dr. Murray has never uh, had any problems with DEA. Dr. Murray has never had a malpractice case filed against him. Good luck finding a doctor who can say that. Uh, and he's been in practice for 20 years in, in many different areas and dealt with thousands of, 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 of patients. Our office is, it, our case, it is getting constant phone calls from clients in Houston and elsewhere uh, who, who want to, to stand up as character witnesses for Dr. Murray. And um, uh, that's the Dr. Murray I know. I don't know Dr. Armstrong. Um, is Dr. Murray, does he have a relationship with the Jackson family, other members of the Jackson family? He doesn't. That he doesn't know them, they don't know him very well. No, he doesn't know the Jackson family very well, and and and, and there's specific reasons for that, and that's that's for uh, that's for the family to to reveal. But uh, um, no, he he doesn't know the family very well. Is is he concerned that the family is asking for a second independent autopsy? No, no. Look, if, if the autopsy is fair. I personally believe that the LA medic medical examiner is, perf is perfectly capable of performing a thorough autopsy and get correct toxicology results. Um, and if they want a, a new autopsy or a, a quicker autopsy, as long as it's thorough, as long as it's fair, we don't have a problem with that. Um, I don't know who's performing the autopsy. Do you know who's performing the autopsy? Yeah. Uh, so uh, whether it's fair or not, of course, that's, that's the issue. Anything else you want to say? Anything else? No? Okay.